What's going on everyone? It's Simran Singh back with another video and today is part two of the ultimate guide to get into dental school video series. Today we're going to be talking about extracurricular activities, specifically clubs, volunteering, jobs, and research, and how those pertain to you being a competitive applicant. We are going to be talking about dental shadowing and dental assisting in another video because I believe that topic deserves a video of its own. So before we get into the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And if you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And yeah, let's get to the video. So today's topic is extracurricular activities. Now, a lot of people have commented on my videos, sent me emails, asked me, Simran, what extracurricular activities, volunteering, jobs, research, whatever the case may be, what is gonna make me stand out as an applicant? I wish there was a clear cut answer for that because there genuinely isn't. But if I were to give you guys advice, I would say be as involved as possible and make sure it's evident that outside your academics that you are heavily involved in other things that don't involve school. So for example, what I mean by that, say there are clubs at your school that you individually are very passionate about. Try your best to obtain a leadership role because in my personal opinion, having a leadership role in a particular club or like an event really makes you stand out because there's a lot of work that gets put into organizing clubs and meetings for those clubs or if you run like a charitable event or any type of event, there's a lot of work involved into that. And that shows the dental school admissions committee that hey, like this person you know, is very active. Like outside of school, they seem like they're making a very good use of their time. And that is very important because as a dental student, you have to have good time management skills. You know, you're gonna be taking anywhere from like 25 to 30 to I don't even know how many credits above that at particular schools, but you're gonna be taking a lot of credits, you're gonna be very busy. And if you are someone that's heavily involved in specific organizations, if you're volunteering, you know, if you're working jobs, and you're doing that while maintaining a good GPA and obtaining a good DAT score, you're truly gonna stand out as an applicant because it shows that, hey, like, not only can I do well in school and do well on a standardized test, but I'm also heavily involved in other things where it requires me to work with other people in order to complete a task. So that aspect is incredibly important. So, as it pertains to extracurricular activities, again, as I mentioned earlier, like if there is a specific club um, that you're very passionate about and you're willing to take on a leadership role for that club, like definitely be involved with that because you know when you interview for dental schools, they're gonna wanna know like, hey, you were vice president or secretary for this particular club. Like tell me about your experiences. Tell me about a time where you had trouble doing this, this, and this. So if you're very passionate about it and you're very transparent about your leadership role and your experiences with that club, it'll be a great talking point in your interviews. Yeah, but in terms of leadership, like it helps you a lot in terms of your communication skills, not only with your classmates and fellow peers, but you know, people that are involved with different organizations that may come into your meeting and you know, talk to your class about their organization and give you guys advice, or say if that organization has charitable events and they're willing to bring students from your club and give you guys an opportunity to, you know, to like branch out and be involved. You know, there's just a lot of positive aspects that comes in to having a leadership position and you know, just organizing things. So I'd heavily recommend if you're passionate about a club and you're interested in being a leader of it, that you try your best in order to obtain that position because it's honestly such a great experience. Beyond being a good student, like dentistry involves being personable, being able to communicate with patients, with faculty members, and once you're actually in like the real world, you're gonna be communicating with whoever works at your practice, whether it be the dental assistant, if you're an associate, whether it be the owner, and like other associates at that particular practice, or if you own a practice, you know, you're gonna to have to have good communication skills when it comes to managing it. So those experiences and obtaining that early on is genuinely gonna help you in the long run. So I heavily recommend doing that. But if you're not able to obtain a leadership position because you know, it can be really hard to do that. Just make sure you're involved with the club, doing whatever you can to show that you're an active member. There are so many people that get into dental school that don't even have leadership positions, but they're members of various clubs and they're passionate about those particular clubs. So just do your best to be involved. It doesn't even have to be dental related as long as you're making good use of your time and doing something positive like 
you know, if you're able to maintain a good GPA and a good DAT and just be heavily involved in extracurricular activities, you know, volunteering, you know, work, like, like it just makes you a lot better because it shows your time management skills. So outside of extracurricular activities, like there's obviously the volunteering aspect all around the country. And especially when you go to university, you're gonna have a lot of opportunities to volunteer at specific events or for specific organizations. So definitely take advantage of that. And again, it doesn't even have to be down related as long as you're making good use of your time and doing something positive. Like it's just a great thing to be involved. Um, and also, so when it comes to jobs, again, you know, obviously like if you're doing a job related more to dentistry and you have those types of experiences, it'll look very nice, but at the same time, like just do something you're passionate about. You know, I've had friends who've went to interviews and their interviewer would ask like, oh, so I see that you were a lifeguard. Like tell me about your experiences, like how was that for you? They just like to see that you were involved and they wanna know about your experiences because at the end of the day, like when you work a job, like you develop a sense of professionalism when you're working that job, you're interacting with people on a day-to-day -day basis. And these are all skills that will help you become a better applicant for dental school and overall just a better you know, person when you're treating patients. So just always keep that in mind. And then people always ask me about research. Guys, when I was an undergrad, I did zero. That's right, zero research. <laughs> and a lot of my friends you know, who got into dental school, they also didn't do research and some of them did. And if I were to give you guys advice on research, like this is my genuine opinion, because obviously I didn't do it, but you don't have to do research if you're not passionate about it. You know, like if you're involved with a research project and you find it really boring and this and that, like it's better to make use of your time doing something you're more passionate about, whether that be volunteering, a job, or a specific extracurricular activity. Obviously not just like, you know, waste your time doing Netflix or whatever, but you know, something more productive, then do that. But when it comes to research, like, you know, it's, a good, it's without a doubt, it's a good thing to have. I'm sure research is a talking point for many applicants, but at the same time, it's not necessary. Like guys, I had zero research on my application and I was invited to nine interviews. So it's not necessary to have, unless you are passionate about it and like your research project is something that interests you, definitely go for it. But in terms of getting to dental school, I don't think it's that important unless the particular school you are applying to um, highly recommends it. So definitely look into that. But in terms of just like in general, I don't think that it's that important. Like I, I would highly recommend doing something you are more passionate about. And I would highly recommend that you spend your time doing something that you enjoy, you know, as an individual. So yeah. All right guys. So that's my advice on the whole extracurricular activity topic. So just in conclusion, when it comes to clubs, just make sure you're an active member and you're making great use of your time. And if you're passionate about the club, try to obtain a leadership position because you're gonna develop a lot of professional skills. You're gonna learn how to communicate with others and it'll just be a great talking point for when you receive your interviews. So secondly, with volunteering, whether you're someone that's passionate about it or just finding a way to make a great use of your time, it's a great thing to partake in and it'll look great on your applications. And of course with jobs, like. Finding something dental related is obviously gonna help you learn about the profession. But if you are involved in a job that has nothing to do with dentistry, that's also great too, because you're gonna develop, again, professional skills, you're gonna communicate with people, whether it be customers, fellow employees, your boss, like it'll be a great way for you to develop your communication skills and help you develop a sense of professionalism. And lastly, with research, obviously that was something that I didn't do in undergrad, but it didn't really affect me when it came to applying to dental school and getting accepted. But if you are someone who's passionate about it and really interested in your particular research project, I would heavily recommend doing it because once again, that's something you could also talk about in your application as well. But all right, guys, that's it for the video. This was part two. Again, if this type of content interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And again, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you have any questions for me, feel free to comment it down below or send me an email. But yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.